From Global Winnipeg, this is Focus Manitoba with Peter Chura. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Spring is here. Well, it's supposed to be anyway. Despite winter's best attempts to hang on late into March, the seasons are changing, and that's prompted this week's focus on safety on the ice. The city's rivers and retention ponds may look like they're still frozen over, but a surprise could be lurking underneath a thin layer of ice. Manitoba's foremost expert in cold water survival will show you how to escape. Also this week, making sure everyone has a chance to succeed. Winnipeg is home to a unique and big-hearted organization that provides employment to people with mental health challenges. We'll also delve back into the question of whether Winnipeggers really are cheap. There's lots of evidence to support that theory, but also some weird ways we really don't mind blowing our money. And the city was excited recently to find out it will host an ultimate fighting championship for the first time. You'll meet a mixed martial arts fighter in the city who's also a trainer for a UFC hopeful. But first, avoiding trouble on the ice. For many Manitobans, traveling on frozen rivers and lakes is a way of life for snowmobiling, ice fishing, and other pursuits. But this time of year, it also gets pretty risky. Take the plunge with Manitoba's Professor Popsicle and learn how to survive. Here's Global's Brittany Greenslade. It's a life or death situation, one you never want to find yourself in. Whew. Stuck in freezing cold water after falling through thin ice. But Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht is an expert and willingly puts himself in this very dangerous spot. He plunges through the ice as a reminder. It's very, very cold and we just, we're just trying to get people the message. It's thin ice month. The ice is thinner than you think. Stay off the ice. Sadly, it's a call the fire department's water rescue unit is far too familiar with. They are the first responders, rushing to the scene to save people who've fallen through the cracks, putting their lives in danger to get the victim to solid ground. We have to uh, tether ourselves to something on the shoreline, something solid. We have our, the equipment that we wear is all flotation equipment, so the suits that we wear, um, it, they, they provide us with some flotation. The unit responds to more than 200 incidents every single year. Probably about a third of those would, would be ice and river related rescue calls. March is one of the unit's busiest months. While the amount of snow and cool temperatures make it difficult to believe, spring is here. And as the weather warms, the ice covering Winnipeg's rivers, creeks and lakes will begin to melt. Once the weather begins to change, that's when the thaw occurs. It doesn't necessarily have to be above zero for the thaw, because the, the thaw will happen from the sunlight, it'll happen from the water beneath. The temperatures are slowly rising and the ice is thawing, leaving a slushy and very unstable river to walk on. One of the first signs it's time to get off the ice, when the city closes the river trail. That happened at the end of February. People are accustomed to thinking the ice is safe and then one day they walk on it and, and it, it won't be as safe as it had been a couple weeks before. If you break through the ice, the cold weather survival expert, also known as Professor Popsicle, says the worst thing you can do is panic. Panic. Panic is everything. Panic never makes decision making a better process. Stay calm and get your breathing under control. And if you're alone, don't try to pull yourself out of the ice. It won't work. Instead, kick and pull. When you kick your feet, the back of your body will come up like that and you'll be parallel with the surface of the water. And then all you do is just pull and kick like crazy. The ice needs to be at least six to eight inches thick to safely walk on. And if you're considering driving onto the river, you'll want to make sure there's at least 10 inches of solid ice. On this day in early March, Tyler Chilbecki wasn't worried after checking the thickness of the ice in Lockport, something he says he does religiously. Usually what I do is I just kind of walk along the ice, uh, drill holes as I go, uh, test them, because you never know, especially with current, you never know, there's uh, variations in ice depth. But under the ice, the current is moving quickly. And on this cold March day, so is Manitoba conservation. Ice shacks litter the Red River all winter long. The deadline to get them off was March 10th. Conservation was ticketing those who failed to comply. A $150 bill, plus an undisclosed removal fee. But the first time you drive onto the ice and you hear all the cracking and, and the ice settling, that's kind of freaky. Trevor Gifford is usually one of the first on the ice, pole and bait in hand, and says he's staying on the river until the very end. Oh yeah, always check, always check. Yeah, you got an ice auger, so come out before you drive on and make sure there's at least, I like to have eight inches at least of ice and then, then I can come out and then I feel it's safe. 
Time is quickly running out and the ice is thinning, but that doesn't bother Gifford. My shack actually floats, so <laughs> I'm not worried if it goes under. But for others, the payoff of one last fish isn't worth the risk. As the end of the winter fishing season draws near, the safety net some felt earlier in the year is long gone. Seen one truck uh, go through the edge and uh, it wasn't too bad they were able to pull them out, but uh, yeah, there's some times when to know to start getting off. And that time is now. Brittany Greenslade, Global News. The Winnipeg Police River Patrol says ice thickness required for safe access ranges from three inches for a cross-country skier to 11 inches for a small truck. Coming up next on Focus Manitoba, finding work in a safe and supportive environment. Get to know a Winnipeg organization that provides employment for people who are dealing with mental illness and don't get the support they need in traditional jobs. Stay with us. Focus Manitoba will be right back. People with mental health issues have to deal with more than just getting better. It's also not easy to find or keep a job when the stigma of mental illness or just the unpredictable symptoms make potential employers shy away or it just makes it hard to work at all. That's where SCOPE comes in. The Winnipeg organization is dedicated to finding appropriate work for the mentally ill. Global's Tamara Frolansky spent some time with SCOPE and some of its grateful clients. It seems like a never-ending fight. When you think you've shoveled all the snow, more seems to fall. Yeah, I'm fed up. I'm getting tired with shoveling all the time. But that's just what John Mark Kristoff wants to do. It's his job. We have quite a few uh, 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 contracts right now, and, and it does. it's really hard work sometimes. It might be tough, but it's work Kristoff is happy to have. He's struggled with jobs in the past. They didn't treat you very well. Um, I, I did everything they asked. I showed up on time. I, I, uh, I did all their, uh, what they asked you to do in their job. And it didn't seem like they really, they really cared. He suffers from anxiety. How he was treated by former coworkers and bosses also left him with post-traumatic stress disorder. Medication is, is not always a, a, a good answer to it um, because it can come with all kinds of side effects. So. I, I only take my medication uh, when I need to and when I was at the last uh, job um, I'm only supposed to take it poss possibly three times a week and I was taking it every single day. Since he started working for Scope he's not as dependent on pills. Scope's just un been unbelievable as far as, as making you feel good about yourself. The nonprofit's acronym stands for self-starting creative opportunities in employment. It gives people with mental health issues ranging from anxiety to bipolar disorder and schizophrenia a stable job. That means independence. It gives you something to do during the day. Keep you busy, get out of the house. A job is very important for somebody, uh, all of us in our lives, to kind of feel a sense of self-esteem, a sense of self-worth. It was 22 years ago. Here in West Broadway, Scope started. A group of Manitoba health workers had the idea for people to do odd jobs in this neighborhood. Since then, Scope has grown significantly. 180 people were on the nonprofit's payroll last year, doing jobs all around Winnipeg. It's all about every day I have to come to work and think, what kind of jobs can we create or maintain or build today? You know, that's what it's all about. The jobs pay slightly more than minimum wage. Most are part-time casual work. From snow clearing contracts with the city to garbage cleanup, staff will even get rid of your Christmas tree. But Scope's main money maker is Treasures, a thrift shop in the North End. Any income goes right back into hiring more people. Good afternoon, Scope, Annette speaking. I'm the first person that most people see or talk to on the phone. I answer the phones, I organize the store, I do a little bit of the retail aspect of things. At the same time, getting work experience, Annette Chimanko can put on a resume. My main focus is to have work and to be able to continue working and hopefully have full-time work at some point in time so that I'm able to have the roof over my head and support my family. Here, she's just a net known for her hard work and dedication, not for the panic attacks she gets or the medication she's on. Everyone has challenges, so I mean, it's just to what degree they have challenges. Everyone faces, you know, things every day 
stressors or, or whatever, just some people, the way they're affected is different. Even though there's more awareness of mental health issues, there's still stigma. Many staff here are reluctant to speak openly about their struggles. There's fear. Even some of our customers wonder, are your, are your, are your crews well supervised and all kinds of things like that? Are your people taking their medications? And we answer yes, of course. We, that's an important part of what we do here to, to monitor them as well. More people are being referred to SCOPE by employment agencies than ever before. It's trying to secure more private and government funding to expand its programs so it never has to turn anyone away. We can make people better if they, if they feel they've earned their, their dollars, they've worked hard for it, and they see an organization that really cares about them. Tamir Ferlansky, Global News. Scope says the work it provides likely reduces overall health care costs by providing rehabilitation in the community for the mentally ill. Coming up next on Focus Manitoba, Winnipeggers are thrifty, but there are some things we don't mind splurging on. Find out more when we come back in two minutes on Focus Manitoba. Welcome back. We Winnipeggers have a reputation for frugality. We'll drive across the border to save a few bucks on anything from groceries to lumber. But there are some things we don't mind opening up the checkbook for. From doggy spas to a week on the beach, there are still lots of things we like spending money on. Here's Global's Eva Kovacs. On average, we don't earn the most in Manitoba, nor do we spend the most on goods and services. But there are certain luxuries we do indulge in. 90 seconds was all it took for Jets fans to snap up all the available seats at MTS Centre when the NHL returned to this hockey-hungry market. Despite a financial commitment in the tens of thousands of dollars, ticket holders opened their wallets and threw down their credit cards, catching even the Jets by surprise. It was a huge surprise for those of us working at True North. There's certainly a passion for hockey here. There's also plenty of passion for our pets. There's no shortage of four-legged visitors treated to the specialized services at this doggy day spa. We can do the blueberry facial, the strawberry, we have apple pie, um, there's also a hot chocolate one, the blueberry facial. You heard it right, a pampering facial for dogs. It's one of the a la carte services offered at Barks and Bubbles Pet Spa, a boutique on Cordon Avenue that has grown faster than this poodle's black mane. Nine years ago, there were 250 clients, now there are 4,500. I think because of the whole unconditional love thing, they, they feel that because their pet is a super companion, that the least they can do is spend a little bit extra on them to show them how much they care. To put a dollar value on that, Manitobans spend on average $458 a year on our pets. As a percentage of our annual spending, that's the highest in the country. When you live in a city that has had more than 140 centimeters of snow this year, 62% more than usual, hotspot vacations are bound to be popular. At a typical vacation price of $1,625, CAA is steadily booking clients hungry for heat. Everybody wants to leave the cold for at least a week, so I think that's why we see a lot of direct vacations in the wintertime. Debbie Peters says the cost is definitely a factor for this province's price-conscious travelers, but more importantly, they want bang for each buck they sink into a trip. What you're willing to spend often relates to where you are in life. As you get older, I think you want a little bit more as far as accommodations, a little bit more luxury, and you're willing to spend that extra to get the value. You certainly don't have to change time zones to shed some of that hard-earned money. Retail sales continue to increase. When it comes to priorities, home furnishings rank up there. Winnipeggers spend the highest percentage of their money on furnishing their homes of any major city in Canada. On average, more than $2,000 a year. And we're dishing out more on ourselves too, it seems. Sales at Polo Park are up 8% over this time last year, and the average transaction has jumped a whopping 10.5%. Coming up next on Focus Manitoba, life in the octagon for one Winnipeg fighter. Meet a man who not only grapples as a mixed martial artist, but trains one of the fighters who may be part of the UFC's first appearance in Winnipeg later this year. Welcome back. It's never easy to keep the kids occupied over spring break, but Manitoba's Theatre for Young People is doing its best to help. MTYP at the Forks in Winnipeg is presenting an exciting display called Zoo Zoo. 
part acrobatic, part mime, the show is performed without words to music and includes penguins playing musical chairs, a cat trapped in a giant paper bag, hippos, anteaters, polar bears, and a whole routine of illusion, comedy, and fun. The show runs from March 22nd to 30th. Here's a preview. Well, you know, it's penguins playing musical chairs, and it's the last uh, three penguins left and two chairs. So, so this the penguin that I'm playing kind of runs around and tries to get to the seat, and and then it's like you know it's moving slowly because he still wants to. He's like behind is still attracted to the seat. He's moving slow, 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 and then the other two catch up, and they're like, you know. What's going on here? You know, are, you, are you cheating? The Maga Theatre started in 1979 and actually these frogs were the very first character just doing kind of a cross between French Cirque Theatre and American Vaudeville. So they started with a stack of frogs because they liked the image and uh, people thought it was really funny. So, And then they moved on to bigger and a little bit more complicated masks. This is an anteater included is the anteater tongue which is a party blower it just uh, adds a little bit of that clowning effect to it um, some polar bears and polar bears is an interesting scene the whole play is just a series of vignettes and they don't really have anything to do with each other because so it's more like circus theater in that way but the polar bears invade the audience which is kind of a fun and interesting thing. Kids go crazy. <laughs> so they actually go out and oh, yeah. dance and all that stuff. Yeah. But for the performer, it's difficult because you see these holes, the, the mask is on top of our head, so we're looking at the ground, but we have to make sure that our energy is looking out the eyes of the polar bear. So we can't see each other or usually hear each other. Um, so it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> Frogs, the anteaters, and the hippos all are on top of the on top of the performer's head and looking down at the ground mostly. The anteater is kind of 45 degree angle down, and the penguins also are are like that. You try to breathe, you know, uh, and uh, there's certain things like uh, you know the amount of stretch that you feel that you can kind of lock onto and say, okay, that's my focus, you know, sometimes you can't see. So, you know, this, if the stretch is not feeling, because you get, you get an understanding of the, of the stretch or of a mark on stage or of the shadow of the light, and you try to adjust according to that. So you pick up on those other little senses, like the, the sound and like you yeah. said, a little bit of light. Sound there. cues, uh, marks on the stage, anything that can help, you know, different people do different things anything that helps you understand where the focus is coming from and you know in the middle of performing you might you know find that oh I'm holding tension in my shoulders which I don't need to so you just you know let go with all the talk surrounding the ultimate fighting championship coming to Winnipeg the AFC could capture some of the spill off with their own mixed martial arts card this weekend it's the Aggression Fighting Championship, and it's putting on its second MMA event in Winnipeg. And a veteran local fighter headlines the card, trying to win a world title some 14 years after he first got into the sport. He's also involved in training an aspiring UFC fighter. Here's Global's Russ Hobson. There was a time nine years ago when Winnipeg's Curtis Brigham thought he was done fighting competitively. I quit fighting um, back in 2004 basically because I didn't have training partners I, and I left, I started my own gym and um, have been working really hard to build up a group and uh, it took me a long time but now I've got all kinds of guys that are better than I am. Brigham opening the Winnipeg Academy of Mixed Martial Arts on St. Mary's Road, better known as WAMA. He trains his own fighters, some world rank like the UFC's Roland Delorme but he still very much had the itch to get back in the cage. Do you miss the fighting aspect of it? 
Yeah, it's, yes and no. You know, the fighting's hard, and it's you know, it's it's scary sometimes. Most of my students have never seen me fight before, which is a bit of a shame. You know, so uh, I just want to show that maybe I can still do it. Brigham has him in his guard. Brigham's been competing in MMA since the late '90s, fighting future UFC stars like Sean Shirk, and even competing on big cards in Japan. <laughs> He had a first-round submission victory in his return to the cage in September, but he's never fought a full five rounds before. And with this being a title bout, it means he has to be prepared for a five-round, 25-minute war. Uh, I've only gone three rounds once in my career, um, and the previous title fight I had, um, I won in the first round. So, you know, while it could have been long and hard, it was an easy one. So hopefully, hey, hopefully this one goes fairly fast in my favor. <coughs> Win or lose, Brigham will be right back in the gym, sharing the knowledge he's learned over 14 years in the sport, a sport that continues to grow. And with the UFC's arrival in June, more and more Winnipeggers will be introduced to mixed martial arts. The UFC has gone so mainstream now, and having it come to Winnipeg, where we have a fantastic commission in place, we have a great venue for it, you know, we're, the city is ready for it. It's going to expose it to so many people who usually probably wouldn't go to um, a, a mixed martial arts event because they're a casual fan, will come to a UFC event, and they'll, they'll probably like it and then keep coming to the shows and, and maybe, you know, their kids or they'll want to start training, and it, it's, it's going to be a giant ripple effect. And more students is just fine with Brigham, whether he continues to fight or just to coach. <clears throat> <laughs> Russ Hobson, Global News. The Ultimate Fighting Championship will appear at Winnipeg's MTS Center June 15th and also on pay-per-view for fans around the world. Well, that's all for this week on Focus Manitoba. If you have ideas for a future episode of this show or any of our daily news programs throughout the week, get in touch with us. It's pretty easy. Send us an email to winnipeg at globalnews.ca or give our newsroom a call, 235-8545. We'll be back next week at this time with more of your stories. I'm Peter Chura. For everybody here at Global Winnipeg, thanks for watching and have a great week. We'll see you next time.